Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is a couple of verses from the first reading appointed for today, Acts chapter 10, verses 42 to 43. Peter said, And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the text. Sometimes things happen in our lives that we just can't forget. We just can't get them out of our minds. And that happened to me uh, last week when I was on vacation down in Florida. We had decided to drive out to one of the many keys that are these little peninsulas of land that extend out of the south part of Florida, where there was a lighthouse and a restaurant. It was a beautiful sunny day, typical of Florida this time of year, but also a little bit windy. We stopped for lunch at the restaurant there. It was an outdoor restaurant. And the first thing we noticed when we got there was they had signs posted that said, do not feed the animals. And we soon found out why. Because as we were getting to our table, a raccoon wandered up into the dining area. And it was about enough to make us leave the restaurant. But we hung in there. The waitress came and shooed the raccoon away. He didn't come back to the restaurant while we were there. And we had a fairly decent lunch. After lunch then, we decided to walk out to the nearby lighthouse. To get there, we had to walk along the beach for a little ways. And because of the way the wind was blowing, a lot of seaweed had washed up on the beach. If you wanted to get out to the water at the beach, you had to walk over several feet of seaweed to get there. And also because of the wind, the waves were fairly large, so not too many people were in the water swimming. But as we walked along the beach, I saw an elderly man walk across that seaweed and out into the water. And then I noticed that he was carrying something, something that you just don't normally take to the beach. It was a clear plastic bag, and I could see what was inside of it. It looked like some ashes. And I turned to those who were with me, and I pointed out the elderly man, and I asked them if they were thinking what I was thinking, and they agreed it's probably what we think is going on. And so we stopped, and we watched the man as he opened that bag, and emptied the contents into the water. He kind of swam around in the area where he had emptied the bag because even though it was very wavy and the water was churning, the ashes just kind of stayed where he had deposited them for a little while and he swam around in the midst of them and he lingered in the water for a while. So rather than keep standing there and staring at him, we kept walking, not wanting to interfere. And at first it looked like he was all alone, but when he finally came up out of the water and back onto the beach, there was a young woman there with some children that he was talking to. She could not have gone into the water with him because she had to stay on the shore to help take care of the children. Like I said, it was one of those events where it just sticks in your mind and makes you wonder. Since we didn't get to talk to the man, we have no idea what he was actually doing. Was this the final farewell to his wife to whom he had been married for so long? And this was her wishes that she be cremated and then her ashes spread in that exact spot of the beach. Maybe that lighthouse was where they used to like to go and had many happy memories there. Or was it some other family member, or even a pet. We have no idea. And it was just so unexpected. You're walking along the beach just on a nice family day, and then you stumble onto this, and it's just like, wow, did that really just happen? The beach was not really crowded, but there were a fair number of people there, and we wondered if anyone else saw what we saw. Also, I also wondered, How common is this in Florida? I've been to Florida a few times, but never seen this happen before on the beach. 
thought about talking to the man, but what do you say to a complete stranger in that situation? And of course, this whole story raises the ish, a lot of issues with cremation and the final resting places of our bodies when we die, someday we all will. And it certainly fits in with what we continue to celebrate now, the Easter season. That is Jesus, the same one whose body was crucified on the cross to pay for all of our sins and was buried, came back to life three days later and was alive with an eternal, indestructible body, and was raised again. First of all, let us be crystal clear that no matter what happens to our bodies when we die, that is not the end of our bodies. Even if our ashes, we are cremated and our ashes are thrown into the ocean and absorbed by the countless waters of the ocean, our bodies will be reassembled and brought back to life on Judgment Day. When we die, our souls go to be with the Lord in heaven, and our bodies are left here on earth, and they decay one way or another through cremation or some other way. And you may wonder, how is that possible? How could it be that if someone has been cremated and their ashes spread along the body in the ocean, how could God ever reassemble that body to which that has happened? Well, what about your body before you were born? Where was your body before that? Isn't this the same God who assembled your body from all kinds of different parts before you were conceived and born? He brought them all together, all the necessary ingredients to make your body in the beginning before you ever existed. So certainly he can put you back together on Judgment Day no matter where the parts of your body end up. He can do it, and he will. When you die, that's not the last of your body. It will be raised again. Just as surely as Jesus was raised from the dead, our bodies will be raised again. The only time we object to cremation is if someone chooses cremation just to show that somehow that will prove that there's no way, if my body is reduced completely to ashes, that there's no way God will ever be able to put my body back together and raise it up. If someone chooses cremation with that kind of attitude, then we would say that is a wrong attitude because God can and will put your body back together no matter what happens to it after it dies. And when we are raised from the dead, it will be judgment day, as our text says. Peter says he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he, Jesus, is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead, namely everyone. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So everyone will be raised, everyone will be judged, but only those who believe in him will receive the forgiveness of their sins and then eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who do not believe in him because will be lost in their sins in eternal condemnation. So there will be that judgment day and our bodies will be raised, reunited with our souls, and all the believers then will rise to eternal life in heaven. And in the meantime, we're supposed to use our bodies for his glory. Just as Peter says, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead, that is our job, to testify and to preach that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead and that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Or as Jesus puts it in the gospel reading for today in John 15, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. I chose you, Jesus says to us, that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that should abide. And the kind of fruit that abides is that fruit that is produced through faith in our living and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is what our bodies are designed to do and should be doing until that day when he returns 
for that judgment day and all people will be raised, our bodies and souls will be reunited, and those who believe in Jesus Christ will be welcomed with all glory and great celebration into our eternal home. Amen.